Root canal treatment of calcified molar teeth could pose difficulties for some of you. I'm Jeevan Rajan and in today's video, I'm going to share a clinical case on how I manage molar teeth with calcifications. Well, what you see here is the patient's x-ray. So this patient was referred to me to complete the root canal treatment and it was clearly visible in the x-ray that the previous dentist had made an attempt to initiate the root canal treatment but unfortunately he couldn't find the canals. So the first thing we need to do is radiographic evaluation. It's very important you read the x-ray before you attempt the root canal treatment. So what do I see in this x-ray? First, mesial tooth destruction. This is probably from the incorrect angulation of the burr when the dentist, previous dentist attempted the root canal treatment. So the point I'm going to note here is I will not go and destroy or destruct any more tooth structure. So our goal here is to maintain whatever tooth structure is there and to only search without destruction on the mesial side. Second, I'm going to look at the calcification. We can see the orifice of both the mesial and the distal canals are calcified. So I need to negotiate three to four millimeters into the orifice in order to find that canal and negotiate and go to the apex. The, the advantage here is you can see beyond the, beyond the calcification the canals are clearly visible in this radiograph. So this is a clear sign that there is no obstruction once I gain my entry into the visible canal there. Okay, I always subject my patients to a cone beam computed tomography. This is a small volume uh, or small field of view. So you only get about three to four teeth in the slices. So let's look at the slices, let's look at the axial it clearly shows that there is a lot of destruction. Okay, I chose that slice just to see, just that is the worst of all these slices. I mean, uh, that is the slice which shows maximum destruction. You can still see there is some amount of tooth structure. So the plus point is, luckily, there is no perforation. And the coronal view clearly shows the angulation. You can see how the axis cavity is prepared. It's more mesially tilted. So angulation of the burr, is very important when you're going in this time. And third, we're going to talk about the sagittal view. You can see there is calcification there. It's very evident, very clear. Probably this tooth had pulp calcification. There was probably a fixed pulp stone from what I see. It doesn't look like a removal. It must have been a fixed pulp stone. And like I told you earlier, all we need to do is we need to get into that calcified area and negotiate and find that patent canal there. Okay. So now that we have studied the x-ray as well as the CBCT, now you are ready to go in and start the treatment. Now I'm going to guide you through the steps in short videos. So please pay attention and I will show you how I manage this. Okay, so now I found a canal and the next thing I want to do is take a radiograph. You can visually see in this radiograph the file is in the distal canal. Reason for taking a radiograph because, okay, this time I'm in the canal. What if it was a perforation? Early identification and also the size of the perforation, it really matters when it comes to perforation repair. So you want to make sure it's a canal and not a perforation. Fine. What else do I see? If you had noticed, I tried to also search for the buccal canals, the mesiobuccal canals, but I couldn't find them. 
And in this x-ray, there's something very important you need to see. Yes, my burr angulation is not correct. I've been tilting the burr or probably removing more dentin towards the foundation. If I did not stop at this point and take this x-ray, I would go further and I would probably perforate and cause an hydrogenic error. So now that I've seen this, what am I going to do? I'm going to start troughing with my burr towards the buccal, buccal wall of the canal. Oh, I'm sorry, the mesial wall of the canal. Let's watch how it's done, okay? So what you saw just now is a long shank slow speed burr. I really like to use them because of two reasons. One, access and second, visibility. They are very handy tools when it comes to situations like this. Now that we have identified the mesolingual canal, next I'm going to go in for searching the buccal, mesobuccal canal. For this, I'm going to be using an ultrasonic tip. What tip you're going to watch in this video is a dense ply Sirona's Stadex tip number three. I chose number three because I found the tip number three to be smaller in diameter. So I wanted something very small so I don't have to, you know, damage or remove excess tooth structure because it's already compromised over there. Let's check it out. Well, thank you for watching my video and uh, please do subscribe to my channel.